My name's Lori Skinner, and I'm a waterfowl monitor for Metro. Been doing this for three years now. And we do our waterfowl monitoring at a beautiful place called Goddard Prairie. And I love this habitat. Wide open prairies, water, wildflowers, just birds. So when I found out there was a prairie in my backyard and I could go there and count birds, this was just perfect. So we come out here about once a week in the wintertime when the waterfowl are here and we count the birds. And every day is different. Some days are like this, a little, little damp. Well, I'm volunteering for Metro because I heard about all the different projects they're involved in and all the beautiful pieces of property that they have preserved and that they are restoring. And so I, after we moved back down here and I was retired and I had time, and I contacted them and asked, you know, what can I do? And this was one of the things they mentioned. And since my husband and I are birders, and we had spent time up in Puget Sound area where you really get to know the ducks. And we thought, now these are birds that we really know. Probably the most important thing to me about volunteering is just giving back. Um, it's also a marvelous opportunity to just be out in nature, which I love. What's been the most exciting to me just in coming out here to do this volunteer work and just going to other Metro properties is just the wonderful realization that organizations like Metro and others are investigating properties that they can buy and restore. And I look out at these places and this could still be farmland you know, and other beautiful places like Cooper Mountain that could be just full of a development and homes. And, you know, Metro is preserving these places and we're giving the wildlife a better chance. My name's Mike Skinner. I'm uh, here doing a uh, uh, waterfowl count um, for Metro. Each time we come out, it's, it's really different because different birds migrate at different times. So sometimes we come out and we might find 500 or 1,000 pintails. The next week it'll be down to 100. And then you'll have 500 mallards that might show up or um, ringnecks or, or whatever the bird might be. I feel good uh, about what we're able to accomplish and help on this. And I know that uh, by doing the bird count, it helps people study what the trends are and what's happening. And uh, hopefully they'll set aside more and more property to uh, preservation. Well, I think volunteering is important because it seems like most of your lifetime you're taking things, you're getting things, and you want to give back something. You know, I just soon have my legacy as someone who gave more than he got, and I got a lot in my life, so I'm volunteering a lot when I retired. It's surprising the property that is being set aside, uh, both by the, Twalton, the uh, Fish and Game Refuge system uh, national as well as metro properties like this in Cooper Mountain. Uh, as Laurie said, uh, that's a beautiful mountain and uh, you just know the developers uh, wanted to get their hands on it with a view and everything. And to be able to set something like, like that aside, um, it, it's, it's great now. It's kind of like, you know, maybe someday the urban growth boundary is going to go all the way around us. So it'll be like a central park. And, you know, how many cities in the country regret that they didn't have more parks? And you got an organization now who's setting things aside so that uh, people can see what it used to look like. Metro's organization is doing so much in the restoration and preservation area. And, uh, you know, you hear about Metro and the paper uh, on a regular basis, land use planning, and everything else. So it's a really broad organization. And all the work is just outstanding. I, you know, I think it sets an example for cities around the country. We've lived in different cities, and it seems like Portland is so progressive in relationship to most of the others. And to me, Metro is the uh, guiding light or the leader in this whole effort. So you really want to support some organizations that's doing the good work that they're doing. So it's real easy. We look forward to it.
I've been volunteering for Metro uh, since 1998. The Metro had organized some contacts with neighborhood groups. I happen to live a half mile that away from where I'm here. And so I was approached. I was head of my homeowners association. So the first time we got 20 some people out here and did some tree planting as we're doing today. What we're doing here is we're trying to restore what it might have looked like uh, back before man did all of the, the logging and some of the mining for the quarry. Why is it important? Well, it's, uh, it, it's great that Metro wants a connection to people. So it's not just a case of some outsiders kind of managing a program, but they really like to have community involvement in their properties. And for me, it's important just because it's a great opportunity. I've just loved working with Metro on this project. That's what's so cool about this pro property. I think you can be out here in different kinds of weather. Uh, there's always the excitement to, to know whether you're gonna see a kestrel flying up there, which it, there was a few minutes ago, uh, hovering in the, the breezes that come up over Cooper Mountain. The kids look forward to going to the far end of the property. But, they called Bunnyville uh, because it's the place that you're most likely to see a rabbit, a wild rabbit. Uh, so they particularly like, like that part. I frankly love the flowers. I mean, the, not today, although the first flowers we saw two weeks ago down near the small prairie. So there are already flowers out in February, the first, but the flower scene here changes every week. You'll see new flowers coming and it's just a beautiful place. I don't think you can go here and not learn something new or at least see something that you don't know what it is. And when you get home, then you can go on your computer or, or look in your book and try to identify that bird that you saw or pull out your flower book and try to figure out what the flower was that you saw on the prairie. You'll love it here. My name is John Plant. I'm a site steward with uh, Metro at their Graham Oaks property in Wilsonville. I think one of the uh, Things I've enjoyed most so far has been the adopt -a plot with the, uh, the grade school. Uh, third, and four, third and fourth graders have adopted special plots to do their plantings in and they go back every year to replant and check their, uh, check their plots to see how they're uh, advancing. And it's good to see the young people involved in, uh, in that type of activity. Uh, being that young, it's uh, just great to see them interested in that. Volunteering is, it makes a good feeling and so far I've been real happy with it. I've always felt that uh, giving a little back on your time, helping out the community. I've been volunteering for Metro about two school years almost now. How did you get involved with the project? I got involved here by my school. We were trying to get internships and we had a job fair, which is where all the mentors come in. And I happened to see the Native Plant Center is one of the choices and I signed up for it and the next day I was here. What was your interest in the Native Plant Center? I like to work outdoors and mess with plants and be able to work with my hands a lot. So that's kind of what got me interested in being here. What do you feel like you'll be able to carry forward after you've done this project? Have you learned any good skills? Yeah, I feel that I've learned plant, being able to manage um, native sites and plant sites and how to maintain um, soil and irrigation. Is that anything you feel like you would want to use in the future? Kind of, sort of. I was kind of thinking I could use some of the uh, the irrigation system. I've actually been using the thought from the irrigation here to build an irrigation system for my uh, animals and my farm at my house. What do you think is the importance of doing the kind of volunteer work that you do? I think that my that what I do here is important that because I help restore plants and restoration of native sites. What have you learned since being involved with the Native Plant Center that you might not have learned? 
I didn't realize, I knew that there were um, native plant nurseries that supported restoration efforts. There's, there are nurseries in the Bay Area also, um, but I didn't realize that there was such a focus on um, plants that are difficult to get in the trade. I just assumed there was um, plant growing of all kinds of stuff, but this is very focused, so I didn't know that. And I've never worked with um, growing things from seeds before, so this is a whole new, this is a whole new experience. And why do you well, think that it's important to do this type of volunteer work before you get something that's this big? I think this is really important because of there's been so much um, loss of native habitat, and um, there's just not enough money to pay people to do this. So um, I've just retired, and I have time, and I'm very pleased to have found Metro, so I can do something useful to make that happen, to make restoration happen. So. Is there anything else that you'd like to add that you feel is important? Well, I just wish more people would volunteer, because you don't have to come for hundreds of hours. You can come for a few hours, and um, it's a beautiful place, and, it, and interesting people are here, and so it's a great way to um, work on the, the natural beauty in the Portland area. My name is Frank Schaefer. I'm vice chair and part of Friends of Lone Fir Cemetery, uh, which we take care of Lone Fir Cemetery here, restoration, education, and preservation projects. It's one of many properties that Metro owns and operates, and it uh, operates as both a cemetery and a green space within this community, being part of the city and so close to the city. I think it's really important to volunteer is to give a little back to the communities uh, and to surrounding areas with the progress of the amount of people that live on this planet and the way properties and lands are disappearing to build houses. We're destroying uh, wetland uh, habitats, uh, wildlife habitats. If we don't do it now, we're going to have a real serious problem. We're not going to have anywhere to let future generations of, of people's kids and their kids and grandkids have somewhere go to see this beautiful you know, wildlife around you. I mean, right now I could hear different, three or four different kinds of birds and the sun is shining and there's flowers blooming and trees budding. It's, a, it's beautiful, it's like, but if we destroy this, we have nothing to hand down to future generations of what these trees and these birds in this area look like native to this part of the country and then the city. What do you want to know? I'm Patty Newland. Well, I saw the Nature University thing in the paper and it sounded right up my alley and it was fabulous. Since 05, I've been doing bird walks and taking kids in nature and raptor road trip, all kinds of things. My name is Adam Boz. I'm a volunteer with Metro. Um, I got involved through a program they have called Nature University, um, which is a naturalist training program. And this is my first time volunteering at the Raptor Road Trip. And uh, this event in particular is, is appealing to me because um, birds, and particularly large birds of prey, were kind of my gateway drug or stepping stone into the world of naturalism, environmental education. And uh, it's just exciting to be out here with kids, dozens and dozens of people, and just as many birds. We've got eagles in the scope over there. They're perched in a puddle. A puddle? Yeah, it's an immature eagle, very dark puddle. puddle, water. Water puddle. Yeah. 
Look through the scope, you tell me. It's right there. <laughs> when you're out here working in the field, there's in equally, you know, there's, there's no expectations, there's no way to count on anything, so um, there's no set curriculum that can be in place. You constantly have to be able to respond to whatever bird flies by or whatever animal pokes its head out of a field. Or, so, yeah, it's, it's always changing and exciting. So. I think it's important to get people out in nature. If you get people out in nature, they're going to have a good time, they're going to learn about it, they're going to want to save it and protect it. They're going to tell their friends, they're going to bring their kids. Certainly working with children is always full of su surprises. Um, you can't enter it with expectations, especially when you're taking children that maybe don't have much experience in the out of doors, taking them to the out of doors. Um, there are going to be children that are completely inspired and curious and will not stop asking questions and you feel like you've set in, in place a domino effect of, of curiosity and passion, which is exciting. And there's also um, children that, that just are not able to forge that connection with natural environments and um, you know I, yeah there's, there's always unexpected turns of events